Alrighty, welcome fifth graders. So uh, here is your help for the um, essay questions. All right. So again, what I'm going to give you is some general brief information, um, which you should find in your essays, um, and then the examples are are up to you. All right. So our first question again: How did Pan Africanism help African countries gain their independence? You can give a specific example um, from a country of your choosing. All right, so the first thing we need to understand is that the movement probably encouraged the countries to seek their independence from the European colonial powers because it stressed unity and cooperation uh, among all Africans. All right, again, the sense of one Africa, um, so that everybody could, so that everybody within Africa felt a di an identity that had not existed before, and that was why it's kind of easy for the Europeans to come in and overtake them. Um, is that you have tribes fighting tribes. Um, it, you know, within the same region, not understand, not seeing that you know if the tribes join together, then they could stand up and revolt against uh, the Europeans. Uh, so these leaders um, tried to unify, tried to unify all Africans, um, and so even if they didn't live in Africa, so they were reaching out to Africans who may have lived in Europe or uh, the United States or uh, Latin America. You know, some place to try to get them to to start uprising, start um, identifying themselves as Africans, not as you know somebody from uh, the Swahili tribe or the Bantu tribe or, or things of that nature. Um, so their slogan again it encouraged you know the continent to free themselves from the European rulers because they weren't really happy. I mean, how would you like it if you were enslaved uh, by somebody and told what to do uh, your entire life and and, you know, it's not like how your parents treat you, okay? It, it's more of like, you know, you get very little food, you get very little water. Um, you wouldn't, um, you know, you'd be beaten down a lot, um, both physically, verbally, okay? It's, it's, it's a sense of that you are worth nothing or little to anybody. There's no love um, that is there. All right, so that's kind of the the gist of the question. All right, so when you think about a country that you want to talk about, um, you know, we did we read that article uh, about Ghana here, okay, and how they got their freedom. All right, so you could use that as your example. Uh, in your book, it talks about um, Algeria and Angola. Um, let's see where's Angola at on our map. Okay, so I mean there are plenty. Here's Angola. There are plenty of countries for you to talk about. All right, choose whichever one you want to. Okay, and then and then write about that. All right. Okay, so our second question. All right. So how did Europe's relationship with Africa shape its history? All right. You need to give at least one example from one example of Europe interacted I need to give at least one example of that should be how not who sorry guys not how not who but how and I don't have my thing with me today so this will look awkward okay how Europe interacted with Africa from the precept blah 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 all right you know the question all right um, so first point uh, then is so the relationship uh, began as trading between equals, right? They saw each other as equals. Um, you know, gold and silver at this time was was what was valuable and and, and sought after. Um, so that's everything was equal, right? You give me this, I'll give you that. You shake hands, the deal is done. Move on, okay? Um, however, whether it be decree of um, spirituality, the sense of you know. The, when we think of the Spanish in Latin America with the three G's, gun, gla, guns, God, and glory, um, or if it's whether um, the Europeans realize they're running out of space, if it's because they're losing all these battles all over the place and losing resources, the mindset changes and they focus their main attention on Africa, and not as equals, um, but as inferior um, to the Europeans. And so... Um, that's where we get the slave trade from, and you know, 
it forced millions of millions of Africans from their homes. Okay, I mean, imagine if you can, you know, being uprooted from your house, leaving your family, being taken from your family, not even leaving, just just taken from your family, maybe in the middle of the night to never see them again, never know whether or not they lived or died. Um, you know, it was it was hard. It was a travesty. It it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, what the Europeans did to the Africans just because they thought that the Africans were inferior to them when they weren't, um, not by any means whatsoever. Okay. Uh, and so this kind of, after it ended, you know, European countries started colonizing the continent to capture natural resources, establish empires there, um, you know, gain new riches, okay? And this kind of all, all ends up... Um, ending um, really because of um, you know what happens uh, World War II with World War II all right um, that's really the key focus on you know the post-colonization um, is World War II and and what happens with it the uprisings the pan-Africanism uh, that happens there uh, is a prime example of post-colonization all right. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me um, so that I can help you answer them. Again, apologize for not being there, uh, but a family emergency popped up and you know I have to be there for my family first. So uh, again, any questions, feel free to email me. Talk to you later. Bye.